What's going on guys, this is Miasin and welcome to my Plunder Patrol deck profile featuring the Brave Token engine. Made the deck so much better, it's actually not even funny. So, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe before we get any further than that. And uh, we're trying to hit 1000 likes because I will be making a live stream on this deck. I plan on doing it, but of course, we need to smash the living pancake out of the like button. And now let's jump right into the explanation. So, of course, I'm playing the uh, minimal engine of Brave Token, so one Griffin Rider. Triple Aquamancer, Triple Rite of Aramisia, the Continuous Spell Card, and the Equip Spell Card. So if my maths are not too garbage, that would be 9 cards. So that's it for this engine. And then I'm playing 9 Hand Traps as well. So 3 Ash, 3 Ghost Bell, 3 Imperm. Ash is just overall pretty good. I don't really want to explain it too much. Ghost Bell can be used against Branded in Red, so it makes her going second so much better against Despia. And that deck is like everywhere. And in case you're wondering why are you not playing Valor... I'm already playing Imperm, so I might as well just want more variety in my hand shops, but Valor is not great when your opponent goes a Luber summon in draw phase off of branded opening, because obviously Valor is a main phase only card. Imperm is a, always a little better, I want to say, when you don't care about like normal summoning Valor or the fact that it's a light attribute monster or the fact that it's like a spellcaster and then you can revive back with Selene. So obviously in some decks, Valor is better than Imperm, but when you don't have to care about that as a monster and it's just another hand shop, then honestly Imperm is always better. It does also doesn't lose to Call by the Grave, and uh, Ghost Bell can negate Call by the Grave. So Ghost Bell definitely covers a, a few weaknesses maybe that the deck would have, maybe probably going second, and it's also very nice against Eldritch. So this configuration of hand shop, all these cards technically can be used against Eldritch, well, the Imperm is probably the worst one because you can only really use it against Lubelion and Albion if your opponent is playing Branded Edlich, but still, if he's playing pure Edlich, Ash and Ghost Bell are great because they can both be used on Scarlet so that Conquistador and Hakuero would probably be dead because Edlich the Golden Lord wouldn't be on the field. So that's it for the explanation of the Hand Shops and the Brave Token. And now for the actual Plunder Patrol monsters, I'm maxing out on every single Plunder Patrol monster in the game because a lot of them are just good extenders. Like... Black Eyes, uh, Bluebeard, and Golden Hair can all special summon themselves from the hand. The only normal summons are Whitebeard and Redbeard, but Whitebeard is a great card to discard, so the only card that is only trying to be normal summoned at all times would be Redbeard, because discarding Redbeard isn't the best value. Obviously, sometimes it's actually pretty good that you get to, to equip it to a monster uh, you control, because you can equip it to like a Plunder Patrol ship list that doesn't have anything equipped, and that would be nice, but... Otherwise, I want to say Whitebeard, great card to discard off of Fateful Adventure, or even the Field Spell, and yeah, Redbeard, probably the best normal summon. This card is, like, arguably the best card in the deck. Black Eyes, I'm just obsessed with it, it's so good. It also allows you to make, like, rank 4 super easily, so you can make Bah Bahamut Shark, or hard make Mork, or just make, uh, whatever, like, your other plays, so the Link Monster, the Synchro that you can also hard make, or even Dragite. Uh, there's another card that I really wanted to play, but uh, finding the extra deck space is actually kind of hard, and that would be White Aura Whale, this card right there, right there. It's insane, man. When you summon it, like, you destroy all attack position monsters you're upon controls, it can attack twice on monsters per battle phase and inflicts piercing damage, and I think if it dies, it revives itself back by banishing a water from a grave, something like that. So, so many effects in one card, and it's not hard to summon. It's literally just as easy to summon as the two other cards. But yeah, fantastic card. If you want to focus more on the tuner monsters, just remember that the two tuners in the deck would be White Beard and Golden Hair. Uh, the other cards are non-tuners, and they're all Water Fiend monsters, so everything is and level 4 as well, so they can all make a Bahamut Shark, which is insanity. Anyways, uh, the other cards would be, of course, four field spells, so terraforming and three field spells. This card is absolutely ridiculous, and I, I guess the graveyard effect of the shipyard synergizes well with the grave uh, with the trigger graveyard effect of red beard because it equips itself back, and then you can return it back to the hand, set back the shipyard, and then search again. So yeah, really, really broken field spell. I love it so much, and uh, all your plunder patrol monsters gain 500 attack for each uh, plunder patrol card in your spell and trap zone. So this card allows you to cheat out a plunder patrol monster from your extra deck, regardless of the attributes. I think that you're a and had so it's just like with the same attribute as a monster on the field or in the graveyard not necessarily that your opponent has in their field and in their graveyard so that's the reason why emblem of the plunder patrol is ridiculously good it's it doesn't have to be played at any more than a one of because it's easily searchable with shipyard and i think mork and even ship list because this searches a generic plunder patrol card whereas this only searches a plunder patrol spell and trap and the synchro monster only searches a plunder patrol monster uh, so I know that I'm actually gonna getting things confused, but if you already know this deck more than I do, 
at least uh, you won't be learning too much with this deck profile. But of course, the goal is always to learn. So again, if I made any mistakes in this deck profile, please correct me because I'm really trying to improve. I'm not great with the deck. I obviously don't have much experience, but this is the best that I was able to come up with on my own featuring the Brave Token engine and uh, a reasonable amount of hand traps and Plunder Patrol monsters. The last card in my deck would be Plunder Patrol Booty. Yeah, you always uh, love that booty. So very nice card. You can again cheat out an attribute by declaring any of them that you want and then transforming one face of monster upon controls into that attribute and then revive back a Plunder Patrol monster from her grave. During each end phase, if you control no Plunder Patrol monsters, this card would die. So make sure you only use this uh, when you have Plunder Patrols or when you feel like during the end phase you're going to keep one. So that's it for the main deck. Now for the extra deck, I'm on two ship lists and then one Dragite because this can pretty much always negate. Three Bran, this uh, neg this banishes spells and traps. So if it would if it would it was if it was just a card that could destroy, I wouldn't really consider it to be great. But it's a fire monster, so if you're up on Ash Q, you can always make this. And banishing Elish cards is really nice. So I'm a pretty big fan. And then Bahamut Shark with Toad, Triple Mork, Triple uh, Black Beard, the Plunder Patrol Captain, and Salamangrit El Mirage because. Golden hair plus a discard equals the link to monster, and the link to monster is basically a starter, so that is very nice. And I don't know if the ratios are on point. Maybe the synchro is a two of, and the fusion is a three of. I have absolutely no freaking idea, so correct me if I'm wrong once again. Anyways, for the idea section, I have Gamma Seal for no freaking reason. I guess it's a water monster. <laughs> and Silent Angler. Yes, I, I think some people try to play like fish cards in the deck and make like Bahamut Shark Turbo. And I don't know if they were making Utopic Draco Future as well, if they would go like double Bahamut Shark into Toad, but. I don't know if I really recommend it because you're usually locked under Plunder Patrol monsters if you use like Whitebeard's effect or the graveyard effect of a golden hair. So it can kind of be a little whack and that's the reason why I wouldn't play like too many non-Plunder Patrol monsters to summon non-Plunder Patrol monsters from my extra deck. So I think that this package doesn't really make that much sense. And it can also make your hands a little more uh, cloggy and whack because if you draw, let's say, those monsters with your hand traps, they don't do much. But if you do, if you draw like a multiple hand traps with like a white beard, for example, you can actually play the game because this has a lot of uh, re resilience in a way. Like even if this card gets o ghost ogred, you would be summoning the red beard on your opponent's turn and use the effect right, uh, right away. And you can't really get Valorant on this card because you're using the effect on your opponent's turn anyways. So this is why this deck actually has a lot going for it and uh, a lot of unexplored potential. Anyways, Valor, I'll re-explain the mentality. This, same thing. Uh, area in case we have a lot of water decks running around. Triple Tactic Talents, Mystic Mind because you're already playing Terraforming. Spiritual Water Art Aoi. <laughs> Funny card, but I don't know if it's like super good. And finally, evenly matched. So that's pretty much it for this deck profile. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.